Supreme truth has been reclaimed Wait a And while. things will never be the same All oh, life changed In the water Rise up Naga Spirit Supreme truth Can you hear it? We advise any of you who think you might be among the divine spirit conscious sacred few to stay tuned to the very end and we'll give you something to step to. Let's begin this step-by-step -step process with a recent quote issued by Minister Louis Farrakhan where he referenced the 2016 presidential election as it relates to the kingdom of Satan. When Minister Farrakhan referenced Satan, he is directly and indirectly referencing the nature of the lower lesser god Set, Self, Sutek, Satan, the nature of self deification that was definitely prevalent in ancient Rome and its connection to the Babylon system of old, as carried by the Hicksuits and their shepherd kings who had invaded Kemet from the time of the rise of the Temple of Set dated around 1720 BCE to the time when King Amos I began the expulsion of the Hicksuits around 1522 BCE. We're talking about the ancient nature of Set, Sutik, Satan, that has been encoded in many guises and disguises as an almighty God. We're talking about that lower and lesser nature of thought, reasoning, and action that was transferred to the New Babylon system that emerged within the Western Hemisphere. This self-deified nature was transmitted through social, economic, political, and religious systems that thrive and survive off of sexual violation, violence, war, and crime as a way of life inflicted upon mass populations through religious persecution, enslavement, and terrorizing acts of white supremacy. Terrorizing acts that have been assimilated, integrated, and adopted by mass populations through force and otherwise. Minister Farrakhan's final analysis was, If Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then can his kingdom stand? End quote. Hillary and Trump are not the real Satan. Satan is a liar, and they do that too. But they are low on the totem pole. They are actors in a scheme. End quote. Final call, November 2016. The sacred ancestral Naga priesthood does not have a specific response for those who are enthusiasts of Minister Farrakhan or the individual candidates in question. However, we do have a response for all of those who have been imposed and superimposed with the social, economic, political, and religious ideologies that oppose the sacred ancestral spirit presence of man, he, and she as children of the sun. Rise up. It's about the state of consciousness you live within. We say that one must become very aware that one is a sum total of the nature of energy that one consumes mentally, physically, and spiritually. In other words, what one puts in will determine the nature of the energy that one puts out and what one puts out will determine the nature of energy that one magnetizes back to oneself. Thus, one will either empower the self to emerge deeper into the individualistic nature of self deification where that self will seek to assert its will by any means necessary with little or no remorse for anything or anyone else, or one will consume the nature of energy that will cause that self to emerge into a greater level of divine humility in full recognition that the self is only a minor part within man, he, and she, personal body universe as it exists within divine socioeconomic family community order within the universal wholeness of the essence of life. Therefore, 
But it really boils down to is this, and then I and I advise you to listen well with the utmost humility and respect without reaction. What it really comes down to is that go up, come down, be it north, south, east, or west. The supreme circle of the tree of life prevails as the essence of divine order, divine social economic family community order. One either exists within the nature of divine order as expressed through one's thoughts, reasonings, and actions, or one exists outside of the nature of divine order that is expressed in one's thoughts and reasonings and actions. If this is clear, then each and every one of you must come to reason with the fact that the nature of religion, as we have come to know it, emerges out of one source, and that sacred ancestral source did identify clearly two natures of energy as expressed by the concept and the realities of two brothers. We make note here, two natures of energy, two ways of life, two religious orders that differ immensely from each other. We make further note for those who state that they are non-religious or anti-religious, atheists, agnostic, and so forth. So long as you are alive, you are living a way of life. Thus, atheism is a way of life, regardless of how it is shaped, just as Judaism is a way of life. Hinduism, Islam, and Buddhism are ways of life. Akan and Yoruba are ways of life. And the list continues to cover each and every living being. Therefore, regardless of the name branded, religious attitudes, values, behaviors, and beliefs of the individual, one's thoughts, reasonings, and actions are the true statement of one's religious way of life. And regardless of what one believes or does not believe, the nature of divine order prevails, and anything outside of divine order is outside of divine order. Quote, Herodotus the historian states that the priests of Heliopolis were the first to discover the solar year. Plato wrote that the priests of Egypt had observed the stars for more than 10,000 years. They preserved the knowledge of the Sphinx created in the age of the lion thousands of years before the ascension of the first Pharaoh and the great deluge. Another important artifact of Heliopolis was the sacred Ished Persia tree, the tree of life, the seat of the Banu bird. The fruit of the tree of life gave eternal life and the knowledge of the cycles. The deluge was part of a cyclic pattern that repeated itself every 12,594 years, half of the procession cycle. They created myths hoping this knowledge would survive the coming 12,594 years. End quote. From the prophetic 12,594-year Banu cycle, encoding the consciousness of higher peace through the divine union of masculine and feminine energy by High Priest Guatemani. The sacred ancestral Naga priesthood is very well aware of the fact that the nature of divine order must be comprehended so as to be transmitted and preserved. The nature of divine order not only requires holistic living participation in the divine union of masculine and feminine energy as man, he, and she, but also requires the divine consumption of the fruits of the trees of life, the raw and living fruits, vegetables, seeds, nuts, herbs, and spice, as the whole life fuel necessary to forward higher peace consciousness into every offspring and vibration of the generation next. Let's take a little time and reason with the sacred ancestral knowledge, wisdom, and comprehension that the Supreme Naga Priesthood has preserved through the ages. Quote, Almost all the names of the gods came into Greece from Egypt. The Egyptians were also the first to introduce solemn assemblies, processions, and litanies to the gods, all of which the Greeks were taught to use by them. It seems to me a sufficient proof of this that in Egypt these practices have been established from remote antiquity, while in Greece they are only recently known. End quote. 
The History of Herodotus by Herodotus, written 440 BCE. The ancestral tellings of Asara, Set, and Nephahet transmits the seeds of the Osarian resurrection, seeds that were carried forward by devoted students who did not always fully comprehend the higher peace conscious encodes communicated by the sacred ancestral Naga priesthood. Nevertheless, the seeds were scattered throughout the world into religious offshooting branches long before the emergence of ancient Greece and its Osiris and Isis tellings and later forwarded into Rome and throughout the Roman Empire, old and new, although massively reshaped, shifted, and corrupted into these modern times. Quote, Asar taught men and women wisdom, and he taught them all the arts. He it was who first planted the vine, he it was who showed men how and when to sow grain, how to plant and tend the fruit trees. He caused them to rejoice in the flowers also. Asar made laws for men so they were able to live together in harmony. He gave them knowledge of the gods and he showed them how the gods might be honored. And with Asar was born Aset, his sister. Afterwards was born Thought, the wise one. Then there was born Nephis, Nepahet. And last there was born Seth. And Seth tore a hole in his mother's side, Seth, the violent one. Now Asar and Aset loved each other as husband and wife, and together they reigned over the land. Thought was with them, and he taught men the arts of writing and of reckoning. Nephis, Nepahet, went with Seth and was his wife, and Seth's abode was in the desert. Seth, in his desert, was angered against Asar, for everywhere green things that Seth hated were growing over the land, vine and grain and the flowers. Many times Seth tried to destroy his brother Asar, but always his plots were baffled by the watchful care of Aset. End of quote. From Banu Book One by High Priest Quatamani. We remind you here that Seth was the bringer of a cold, cruel, violent, blood spilling nature, an opposing nature of individualistic rebellion against divine order, a renegade male whose only focus was to satisfy his self asserted individualistic will, a renegade male who did seek and search to destroy all that his elder brother saw had secured within divine social economic family community order. Yet self stood opposed to the whole life consumption of the fruits of the trees of life and as such he would apply any and every social, economic, political and religious means available to block man, he and she from consuming of the tree of life. Yes, self was a god, a lower lesser god, the epitome of monotheistic energy. Yes, self was a man, a lower and lesser man, he, causing she to nurture to a lower and lesser degree, thus lowering her femininity to his lower and lesser monotheistic self-deified supremacy. Self was a consumer of dead, vitalized, and depleted energies, and thus Seth was the expression of a death-consuming cultural way of life. It is then no wonder that the ancestral tellings reveal that never had left set in his cold and pale desert of bowl as she sought to align with the divinity of holistic living masculinity. It is equally no wonder that never had chose to unify with Asar in matehood and join in a sisterhood mate relationship with Aset, a relationship that allowed both Aset and never had to share the divine masculine guidance and protection afforded by the higher peace conscious nature of the soul. We remind you that when we identify set, we are identifying the satanic nature of self deification that is waged a spiritual war against the sacred ancestral spirit presence of the Osarian nature that is the essence of man, he, and she. A spiritual war that has been continuous and ongoing within the meltdown age of this Banu cycle. 
And what has all of this got to do with the cold, pale, callous way that the deified self continues to display its attitudes, values, behaviors, and beliefs up until this very day? We have been given some pathetic insight into the self-deifying nature of energy that caused the rise and fall of many empires within this new cycle. We note that at the height of social, economic, political, and religious power, there was a supremacy nature of energy present within the hearts and minds of the Roman governing body and the populations at large that did cause the ancient Roman Empire to fall. We note that the USA has often been identified as the epitome of New Age Rome, and within that identification, there exists a massive mastermind code of self-deifying deception, otherwise known as white supremacy, a supremacy that plays out in a monotheistic, God-like delusion that calls upon the nature of the God set, Sutek, Satan, to justify one's rights to consume the life energy of others in acts of blood spill and oppression. If one quietly observes, one can reason that a blood spilling nature does breed brutality and vicious, cruel, and heartless acts of violation against those deemed inferior, those who have been defeated and conquered in battle, those who have been captured and enslaved, those who have been reduced to submission through hunger and starvation, deemed unworthy to receive the supremacist privileges and entitlements. First and foremost, this supremacist nature will manifest a way of life that is fueled by a food supply that causes one to prey on the life energy of others in slaughtering acts of blood spill, that is, flush consumption, as one values one's self-deified existence above all things else. We are speaking of a hunting, herding, warring way of life that manifests a hunting, herding, warring religious order within a consciousness of blood spilling, conflict, confusion, and chaos. Make no mistake about it, we're speaking of the social, economic, political, and religious orders of the Sethian self-deifying satanic nature, and there are many sects and subsects. Let us begin by dealing with the largest religion in the world, Christianity, as it has been presented under the Judeo-Christian faith that rose to the seat of power in ancient Rome, 325 A.D. Quote, as of 2010, Christianity was by far the world's largest religion, with an estimated 2.2 billion adherents, nearly a third, 31%, of all 6.9 billion people on the earth. End quote. How could disciples and followers of a religious order founded by a figurehead known as the Prince of Peace carry out the most blood-spilling acts of sexual violation, violence, war, and crime known we are speaking of the enslavement of a multitude of millions of ancestral populations who were captured, displaced, enslaved, raped, and slaughtered in the name of the Lord Jesus, amen, for liberty and justice for all chattered slaves who were used to replace the multitude of millions who were slaughtered by those who invaded and dispossessed native populations in order to possess their homelands. We remind you that it was not just one social, economic, political, or religious order that has carried out these atrocities, but rather an entire global invasion of monotheistic Sephites, that is, war-mongling, flesh and blood-consuming, self-deifying disciples and followers who forwarded the nature of the God set, self, sitic, sutin, Satan. In fact, this nature of blood spill and oppression is a standard pattern of those disciples and followers of the Abrahamic religious orders and their self-deified nature of monotheistic supremacy. Do not think by any means that this does not include 
the self-deified invader tribes and clans who did extend their blood-spilling conquests into India to install the Brahmin Hindu supremacy caste system that still exists up until this very day. We're talking about individuals who have been trapped in the mastermind delusions, illusions, and dreams of faith-based religious orders that ignore the necessity for a higher peace conscious thought and reasoning in action where one is able to claim salvation with no whole life change. Quote, Galatians 2.14 A man is not justified by works of the law, but through faith in Jesus Christ. End quote. We are talking about religious deception that ignore the need to detox and purge in order to heal from mental, physical, and or spiritual disorder, toxic disorder that opposes our natural and innate earth, soul, and conscious state of being as man, he, and she. Such religious deceptions were viciously encoded through handcrafted mistranslation and misinterpretation during the early Christian movements and sealed with persecution, blood spill, and murder to forward the self-deified nature of a lower and lesser God, a jealous God, a God of vengeance, greed, war, and wrath, who loved the smell of burning flesh and a bloodbath on his behalf. We're speaking specifically about Christianity, that is Judeo-Christian faith, as it was reshaped and shifted by the quote Apostle Paul and later hand delivered to Emperor Constantine, who was in search of a God to lead him to victory in a blood spilling battle to gain dominating and controlling supremacy over the entire Roman Empire. As we stated at the close of presentation one, one of the most effective warlords in the last 2,000 years was Roman Emperor Constantine, who used religion to establish and secure his social, economic, and political power base. Thus, Emperor Constantine was not seeking a, quote, prince of peace, but rather a fearsome war god of blood spill within the satanic nature that could deliver the defeat of his opponent, Maxentius. And so Constantine was the victor, and as such he gave his allegiance to the god whom he felt had favored him in battle. Once again, we're talking about the nature of Set, Sute, Satan, floated and encoded as the almighty God. We're speaking of the satanic consciousness of a cold, bold, self-deified soul whose primary objective in life is domination and control within a supremacy syndrome of lusting greed to feed the self-asserting will of the monotheistic seed. Take heed. We say that blind faith is the loophole of domination and control that continues to lead flocks of believers into the valleys of the shadows of death. We're talking about the shadows of a death-consuming culture where the consumption of dead, devitalized, and depleted energies have left a multitude of millions afflicted with mental and physical sickness, disease, and disorders. We're talking about deep-seated faith, hardcore, where common sense reasoning exists no more. What would you do if you found out that your actions exposed the hidden nature of your faith? And that hidden nature is satanic, a self-deifying nature of ego-driven individualism that asserts the will to control your eating, drinking, thinking, reasoning, and every other action. What would you do if you found that your satanic nature that is your self-deified nature continues to manifest the suffering, grueling misery aches and pains for yourself and others within a death-consuming culture that opposes the essence of life and supreme love. What would you do if you found out that your faith in Satan, that is in self-deification, allows you to indulge in toxic consumption and then causes you to suffer the affliction of brain, body, and spirit, including cancer, heart attacks, diabetes, 
fibroids, depression, anxiety attacks, and dysfunctional relationships. Would you then be willing to do the work necessary to detox, purge, and heal from the self-deifying nature that opposes the divine laws of universal order? Or would you constantly seek the justification of blind faith that allows one to speak words of righteousness while hiding and denying one's own satanic nature, which allows one to continue indulging in the privileges and entitlements of one's personal supremacy syndromes. We're speaking of the spiritual blindness that promotes blind faith and causes one to resist and rebel against making lifestyle changes, even as one suffers grueling misery aches and pains, and even death while crying and wailing about how the Lord, their God, would carry one through into the by and by where the pains will be no more. Or, on the other hand of the satanic nature, one simply states that one will ascend into a higher consciousness through some self-deifying act of mental projection. You know, like thinking, and so it will be. Quote, for as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. James 2.26 This quote is from James, James the Just, known to be the devoted brother of Jesus. James' objective was to carry out the sacred ancestral Asarian teachings that his brother brought forward. Yeah, that's right. People often ask the I and I, do you follow the teachings of Jesus? And I respond with another question. It depends on which Jesus you're talking about. Are you talking about the handcrafted Jesus that was orchestrated by the disciples and followers of the Temple of Seth? Or are you talking about the Jesus who studied within the sacred ancestral Asarian temples of Kemetic Egypt? We will continue this presentation from this point in part three of this series. Rise up, children. Rise up, Rise up children. It's time Rise to up, shake children. the devil out your Rise soul. Rise up, children. Rise up, children. Rise up, children. Rise up, children. It's time to shake the devil out your soul.